Okay, so today I'm going to be going through an IKA RW20 uh, digital mixer, which is being horrifically abused in its uh, semi-industrial application uh, using, as you can tell from all the rust, we're working with chlorides. These guys are not designed to work in that environment, but they have actually held up for several years, which is pretty impressive. However, eventually what we've been finding is that the knobs are either getting totally seized uh, or the chucks are getting horribly seized. This chuck has actually already been soaked in Varsol, which is why it can move. But um, the net result is that I have to pull these apart, um, clean up some corrosion, repair a few parts, and then uh, I've been replacing a lot of the hardware with stainless. So this actually, I've already replaced these back two screws with stainless. Um, when they come stock, they come with these uh, really, really flat-headed T10, which I'll pull up. These short little T10, uh, they're M3 and they're T10, uh, and they're a pain in the butt because they corrode really easily. And then, of course, because they're torques and they're really, really flat, you try and put a screw remover in there and they just break and strip off. So on this one, I've actually had to drill out the front screw. Um, and then after I removed the piece, I put it, made a little jig for the drill press, cleaned it out and retapped it. Uh, anyways, it's on to the show. So I'm going to start off by, uh, actually I'm going to take the chuck off first. So the chuck, you can see this one little, um, it's an M2.5 little set screw here, and it actually fits into a hole in the shaft. So if it comes free, you just have to undo it, and then it's just sort of interference fit a little bit. So you just have to pull it off, and you can see on the shaft here, a little hole, and then how that lines up. And so I've had these get really tight, and the way that I've gotten around that is I just soak them in. Uh, I've been using Croil. And it seems to work okay. Now, let me just clean up my hands. So, once you get the chuck off, there's three screws, all T10. You're going to need a proper T10 driver. You can get the front with a bit, but with um, the, um, the back one, it's deep enough, you need to have a proper driver. So, uh, I'm using an M2.5 here because I've replaced the original screws with these wonderful little. Um, I bought these from McMaster Car. They're M2.5 316 stainless, 10 millimeters long, and they're a little beefier. They're a lot beefier than the original ones, which seems to be a good upgrade in my experience. So if this strips off, I can actually fit a, uh, a screw extractor in there. Plus, I'm going to get a fighting chance of them surviving without um, with the 316 stainless. Okay, so how it opens. There's a um, a spring holding the dry I'll pull it open, okay. So uh, this, I'm opening it up for you for your sake. Uh, there is a piece that I don't have on here right now, which is, I'll show you, I'll show you in a good point. So this is how it typically comes out. I'll move this to the side. So you've got this drive wheel here, which makes contact with, uh, if you can see inside, there's a, a little cone that sits directly on the motor. So that sits using this little um, spring to clutch type device. And it um, rotates, transmits through this little clutch, clutching mechanism with the two speeds. You can see how if you pull the clutch down, you can change speeds. There's a little bit of help. And then you can see high speed versus low speed. So what I've been finding is um, this mechanism here that pulls in and out, the aluminum has been getting corroded and that seizes that up. And then the bearing on the, the front bearing here, which is underneath this protection plate also seizes up. So this one I've already fixed. I'll take you through the uh, fixing of the, the broken one here. Okay, so once you get this open, this is undoubtedly going to come springing apart. Not really a big deal. Find it and you're left with your two bits. You're left with this front piece here, which on this one is totally and completely seized, so I'm going to have to pull that apart. And the body of the, uh, the thing, which it appears to be, yeah, it's uh, something's off there. That's not working. Okay, so let's start with pulling off the knob, and then we'll start disassembling it. So the knob is just press fit on. There's a little sort of spring clip here. And uh, my wonderful coworkers have been putting a wrench against the plastic to try and get this to turn. And the result is it rounds off this little brass shaft here. 
uh, and it's actually broken off on several of these. So I've had to order new ones. And then you can see this little spring clip here. It gets rounded out and then it stops working. So my solution to that is I've just bought knobs that fit over the shaft. It's just a quarter inch shaft. So I've just bought knobs that fit over it and it seems to be working well. Okay, so what, that knob's off. And so now we can see we've got this motor cone. This is just a, a machine taper holding this on. So all we have to do is get under it and it just lifts off. And so I've been using this. Ah, come on, you. I've just been using a screwdriver and this Allen key and kind of fumbling around with it. Here you get to see my, uh... come on. Depending on if I choose to edit this, you'll either hear me swearing as I try to pull this out or, come on you bugger. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. You can harass me in the comments for it. Usually they're easier to get out than this. Just be careful of the electronics if you are prying because these wires are a little sensitive here. Okay, come on, cooperate. Okay, I'm gonna try. Try another thing. Okay, I'm going to get this out and I'm gonna pause and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've finagled it off. It didn't actually take much pressure. You just have to pull directly up. If you're familiar with machine tapers, they do a really good job staying in place. So, this is a little drive disc. As you can see, it's corroded on here, as is everything in this entire freaking building. But um, I'm gonna give that a clean up with some Scotch-Brite before I put it back together. Okay, so that reveals um, three, and these are T15 screws. Um, and they, uh, they hold the motor on. Um, so this motor, which is actually moving freely, which is probably a hint as to how this is broken. Um, so I just got a little bit driver here. So I'm moving the motor all the way back. Typically what you have to do is you either have to um, move this move this with a wrench or if it's totally seized then things get a little bit more complicated and you have to, um, well, let's just say that I've had to do destructive removal to remove this part if it's totally seized and then replace them. So. I'm going to uh, first, um, actually, before I take that off, there's a little set screw. Let's see if you can see it. Maybe you can see it on the spindle. You'll see it. It's just a, it's a little, I believe it's a one millimeter screw, and you just need a long Allen key, which I've got right here. It's a long Allen key. It's metric, of course, because these are German made. And loosen that off. Okay. And so that. Let's you move the spindle out. Okay. So, uh, on to removal of this piece. So, just three screws come out, comes apart really easily. Now, the thing you have to be careful with is that when these are removed, the motor will hang free. And you don't want to let it hang off the motor wires because um, if you damage the motor wires or the electrical connections, it's a real pain in the posterior to rewire these. However, if you get a hold of the schematic diagram, uh, which I will try to leave a link to, um, it explains all of the wiring. It's got a, they were very nice to give us a wiring thing. And if you have to order spare parts, there's a chart that comes with this. You send an email off to them and they will um, send you the part, quote you and send you the parts. It just takes a little while. You can also send it directly to them if you want them to repair it. But if you're watching this video, the chances are you want to repair it yourself. Okay, so you can hopefully see, let me move this up, how uh, this motor has lifted. And that's because there are two little springs which in this one very surprisingly have survived. Let's see, I'll pull one out. See these little springs here. So the motor rides back and forth in a little track, um, which here, let me show you. Okay. So you can see it rides back and forth in a little track here. That's what these springs sit in. And so I've been finding the springs get horrifically corroded and they come out of uh, my thing's looking like this. They're in multiple pieces or just literally dust. So um, you can order more of these springs or my solution has just been to, this is um, uh, one thou uh, brass um, shim and I've just cut it and bent it so that it fits inside of the slot. 
and it seems to be doing a serviceable job. Serviceable job. It's not perfect, but for the, the low, low price of free, it's doing the job. Okay, so you've got this apart, you've got this loose, and so now what you want to try to do, if you can, if it's loose enough, is rotate the spindle so you can see that metal carrier, uh, the motor carrier, I'm not sure what they've named it, but it basically just carries the motor. Rotate the spindle so that, come on, come on. Uh, this one appears to be broken, so it's not cooperating. So I've typically been using a, uh, an adjustable wrench to move the, the one side, but of course somebody at my, my work has taken that, so I'm using a pair of pliers. All right, so you can see how it's coming forward. Now make sure when you loosen that set screw, if it's sticking up, the thing will get stuck on it and then you're gonna have a real hell of a time getting it loose. So, all right, there it goes. It's come off. We can see that that's bent and that's probably because somebody's tried to force it because it was seized. And then of course, corrosion on here. So I'll, before I put this back, I'll clean this up using a wire brush and then absolutely coat it in lithium grease as well as bending that, this back into place. Okay. So that leaves the spindle and sometimes it cooperates and you can just get, get a screwdriver just into the front side of it, just in the thing, and it'll slide forward. This time it's not. So what I've discovered for this, which I'm going to pull off this electrical insulation, don't lose this, uh, is the main board here is, oh, let me see, sorry, I get that in shot. The main board right here is sitting on a little peg and it actually shoots through from the front. Now, if you take just a little screwdriver and push that down, the board can tilt forward and that gives you enough space to get behind it with a screwdriver and I don't think you can see it here but if you look closely there's a, a little space between the spindle and this little uh, and the shaft here the axle and you can take your screwdriver and it pops off and of course because things have to be fun you're gonna see a washer there's two washers there's a little wavy washer that sits against the spindle and there's a flat washer which is either still on the shaft or is dropped down somewhere inside of it. We'll find out when I tap it over. That uh, sits between this, so the arrangement is this sits against here, I get right against it, and there's a flat washer, sort of looks like this, that sits on top. Now, if you can find them, I haven't been able to um, replace um, these flat washers, just buy new ones. They're cheap as hell if you can find them. Um, and you're left with the shaft which is, uh, let's see if you can see it, maybe you can see it. Um, back here, uh, my lighting isn't very good. Assume it's back here, it's sticking straight through. Um, I wish I had a flashlight on me, but I don't. And coming out the front, and, and this guy here, it's sort of moving, but still really stuck. So the two options are, if you can, pull it out. Just work it back and forth until it comes loose, which it is on me, for me. Now the other option that I found is if you can take it out with a hammer very carefully it's it, it's cool it works so I'm just gonna pull these springs off to the side and take my carrier plate and I'm gonna pop it back in you can see it drops in okay so I'm back in I'm just gonna take uh, two of these screws Oops. production quality take two of these screws and just hold it back in place so that the motor doesn't flop around while I do this. And I recommend doing that anyways for when you're working on it. Um, it. If you have to manipulate it and the motor's hanging free, it's really easy to screw up the wiring. And tr trust me on this, it's a pain in the butt if you have to rewire the thing because uh, it's very tight inside and they've put the wiring inside this really nice protective sleeve that keeps it all nice and safe, but that protective sleeve is glued in place and you can't move it. All right, so now this isn't hanging free. And uh, what I've come up with for getting this loose, I just have a piece of, uh, this is just a little piece of a flashlight actually, but whatever works. Um, so the shaft sits through, and then I have a simple little punch, just a punch, um, and just a little tap of the hammer, and it will, there it goes. It'll pop right up. Now, if you have a second um, second hand to help you with this, helpful for this, situ this situation. All right. So now, sorry, let me get this back in the shot. You can see this hole in the front. 
uh, which is covered in corrosion, of course, and the, the little axle piece, which is also covered in corrosion. So I'll clean that off, sand it, and that, that will allow this to move more freely. Um, so if you find that you can, you know, you re -lube everything and it's making this horrible, horrible squeaking noise, the chances are you're corroded. So that's clean, and you can see there's another flat washer in the front here. Um, um, on mine, they're horribly corroded, so I haven't been touching them because I don't have spares. Um, you can order spares from them or you can buy them separately. It's the same size as the other washer, which is nice of them to do, so you don't have to order a bunch of different sizes. All right, so I'll give that a clean, and then I have been just cleaning these up using a little bit of emery paper, and I've just been wrapping it around up my punch here, and then going in with the emery paper. and. You probably, if, if you're getting a lot of dust, I'm going to tilt it forward actually so the dust doesn't go in. If you're getting a lot of dust, you're going to want to blow this out just gently. Or if you decide to pull out the electronics, which you can do, there's little screw terminals on them. You can pull out the electronics and wash it out. All right. So I've given it a little bit of the sand. I'm just making a paper towel. A little plug thing. I'm just going to go in and wipe it out. All right, let's see. All right, so now it's moving freely. I will lube this up with some white lithium grease before I, I do the final assembly. Right, okay, so that's that taken care of. We have the spindle out, um, and we can see on it, uh, where's my little, ah, there we go. You can see the little set screw that it sits in. Right, you can see the profile actually, it's very interesting. So it's actually got a flat shape that lines up with the flat shape on this. So when you're putting this back together, keep that in mind. If it's not lining up, it's probably because you don't have flat to flat. The other thing which helps a lot is do a test fit before you put it in, because sometimes, especially if you have to use a hammer to pull it out, you'll deform the back end of this a little bit, and then all you have to do to fix that is just run over it with a file and just take the edge off, and then it'll go right in. Okay. Right. Okay, on to the next part. So um, I will, I'm going to swap over to um, covering the front half. I will reassemble this once I've got the front half ready to go. All right, so now we're looking at the front half. Uh, this is actually uh, very broken. Um, we can see here on this gear, its teeth are smashed. Um, so I'll pull this apart, but I'm not going to reassemble it using this one. I, I will uh, find another one. I've got a few of them that are unrepairable, so I've got a few spare parts kicking around. Um, and it's also moving really, really tightly, which is telling me that one of the bearings or both of the bearings are probably shot. So in order to fix this piece, you need to make sure you have the chuck off. If the chuck is stuck, you can't fix it because if you look closely here, you can see there's a little C-clip and that little C-clip is fitting in a, a little key or a little slot on this shaft. And then that's actually what's retaining all of this. Uh, and there's a little thrust washer in here too. Uh, so you need to have one of these teensy little, I don't even know if that's, like not even a millimeter wide, these little little slots. I don't have a C-clip tool that can do something this small, so I'm gonna do it a super ghetto way. If you do have a C-clip tool, you will find this part of the job way easier. So all I've been doing, assuming I can find my other screwdriver, oops, as I bounce my camera stand, um, is getting one screwdriver under the clip and then using the other one to lift it. And it seems to work really well, it's not too bad. So here, let me just um, move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Now, if you have a C-clip tool, again, you're going to laugh at me for having to do it this way. But it's been fairly reliably working. Oh, so it's hard to do with the camera between my arms. Okay. There it goes. Okay, so I've got it lifted up. I've got my one screwdriver out. This is actually a really uncommon size. I think I have, you know, your standard automotive C-clip tools sitting around in my uh, my toolbox, but this appears to be, I don't know, just a really small scale one. All right, that's loose. So your two options for lifting it up are just sort of grabbing it with your pliers and trying not to break it. I've been finding the easiest way to do it. It's kind of rough looking, but it works. Oh yeah, okay, actually one thing to note. One thing to note, I, have, I forgot to mention this. You'll see right here, uh, there is a, oh, this one's got a seized clutch too. You'll see right here, there is a, um, 
a little plastic tube that extends up. Now, if you're familiar with these, you'll know. Let's see if we can cut it on camera. Yes. You can push the impeller shaft all the way through. So what they've done is they simply just have a little plastic tube that extends up here. So that's just press fit on. It's really, really loosely press fit on. So if you get a, a, a skinny little screwdriver, hold it so it doesn't move. Just get a skinny little screwdriver and get under it, and it just lifts right up. And then you can also pull this off too. This is just sits right on the shaft here. So that comes up. This one's in decent shape. Okay, right. So uh, this one is also on my to fix list. Okay, so back to the one I'm working. Um, so we've gotten the C-clip loose. And again, you'll want to remove that tube before you flip it over, otherwise it's going to be up in the air and you don't want to break it. We will just get under it here. Come on, there you go. With the two sides of my sc two screwdrivers, or again, if you have the proper tool, please use the proper tool. It'll make your life way easier than mine is. And just be aware, as you get this thing up to go over the top, it's gonna come friggin' pinging right the hell off, because what do you expect? Nothing can be easy. And then you get to crawl around on your workshop floor trying to find the thing, which ends up being behind a pile of dust in your the bottom of your workshop, and you never can find it. Okay, so we got this off. I've kind of marred up this shaft a little bit. It's covered in rust anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, I will sand that off, and then you'll see a little this little uh, piece of stainless here, which is just sort of like a rough shield. It's. I wish they had put a seal of some kind on this. It would definitely have saved some of the bearings that I'm finding dead, or at least use sealed bearings. But then, of course, we're using them in uh, probably the harshest conditions you'll find and um, some of the harsh conditions you'll find and they're holding up relatively well. Okay, so your two options here are just get under it and it'll just slide off. There it goes. And then, come on, there it goes. And then underneath of it you'll find this little thrust, it's a wavy thrust washer. Um, sh come on. It's just stuck. There it goes. A little wavy thrust washer. And this bearing, which looks like it's seen better days. Right. Okay, so on to uh, removing this pack here. Uh, so the easiest way I've found to do this uh, is uh, what I like to call percussive maintenance. All right, so I've got this next to my, uh, my arbor press. Now that's an option. If your arbor press is big enough, you can just press it out with an arbor press, but you do need to support the backside. And it's got this little, I guess it's sort of like an indexing pin here. And so you kind of have to have it set up off to the side. But what I've been doing is I just have it set up sitting um, in a corner of my workbench so that there's space under it. And uh, I've just been uh, taking a little piece of wood uh, just to keep from marring up the shaft. Sorry, I'm at an awkward angle here. And then just lightly tapping it. It doesn't take much force. And if your, um, uh, your thing isn't horribly rusted, it might just come out on its own. So you'll see as you lift it, oh, that's not good. Uh, this, this might be deceased. Um, this piece should come freely. Uh, let's see one that's working. So this is how it switches speeds. So this, if it's working, will, yeah, see how that lifts up and down freely? This one here, it looks like this bearing is totally and completely seized. And so what's happened is, is Instead of it coming straight out, my gears have lifted up. So be careful with that. I've actually had this gear pop on me. And so I'm going to see if I can... Oh, this is going to be a pain. Um, well, we'll see if it breaks. If it breaks, it breaks. It's already um, pretty screwed anyways. And then I've got this just little plastic rod I've been using to push it the rest of the way down. All right, so that's free, and I've got water dripping out of this. I hope that's water. All right, so this is more what it should look like when you uh, you go to push it out. You can see how this piece has come up nicely here. So the trick is, uh, when you're pressing this out, uh, pressing or hammering, depending on what you have available to you, um, you're going to want to stop just as it gets the shaft gets flush with the bearing here. 
you can see it's flush with the bearing. That gives you just enough space to tweak this guy out and then go pinging across your workbench. All right, I'm just gonna push this the rest of the way out. I have my, using the most technical catching method possible, I've got my feet under it. I'm just catching it with my feet so it doesn't bounce. Out. And this time it's come out with the bearing, um, just because of the corrosion, it's not really a big deal. And this bearing's moving freely, so I'm not going to play with that. Okay, so we can see now we've got this nice carrier piece here. That's where that flips up and down. I fill that with lithium grease. We've got the front. You can see, if you look closely, I don't know if you can see it on this, but you see those little ridges? Those give you the bearing spacing, so you don't have to worry about measuring or anything. You just tap it till it's flush. And then we've got this front bearing sitting here, just also moving freely. And uh, this, I'm just gonna push out very, very carefully. It's not in there very tight. I'm just gonna push it out very carefully using a, um, a punch. Uh, and a little bit of, I've got it lined up on the edge of the bearing so that it, um, it doesn't damage the shielding. And then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tap. All right, now that it's loose, I can just sort of pry it out. Very little force. I'm not worried about damaging the bearing that way. Okay. So uh, on to the next step. So you can see here, this piece here, totally seized. You can see we've got a little, um, you'll see it's a little hex uh, or a little nut. And then there's a, an independent shaft with a, um, a little slot cut into it. And so this is what, um, if you can see this slot here, I'll show you after, uh, is guiding the, um, the path of this as it changes speeds. So uh, this guy, ideally you'd want to have a little wrench that fits on here. I actually haven't found, I don't have a wrench that's this small, so it's not on very tightly. You can just grab it, grab it with a pair of pliers, loosen this off, and then just take a, a small screwdriver and it should hopefully come, yeah, there, it came nice and loose. I haven't had a problem with these getting corroded yet. Okay, so once that's loose, um, you can push this through, otherwise it's gonna get stuck. Now, something else to note, uh, if you see right here, there's this little square piece in the casting. Um, it's holding a spring and a ball bearing, and that ball bearing is what's um, interacting with your detents to tell you when you start and when you stop. And so what's going to happen is as you press this, it's going to come flying out unless you, unless you hold it. And um, I've had a few where it's pinged across the room and again, looking around to see if you can find it. So um, I haven't found an ideal method for pressing this out yet. Um, so far the best I've come up with is I've got my little arbor press there and I've just been putting it up in the arbor press against a piece of wood and then just pressing it down with the arbor press. The other thing you can do, oh, 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 it's actually coming off, coming loose for me here. If you don't have an arbor press, there it goes. Um, you can, uh, if you get something that fits this radius really well, you can hit, bang it out softly with a hammer, um, preferably with a piece of wood against it because this is it looks like Delrin, but it's not, um, it'll deform. The other thing you can do is um, a little bit of WD-40 might help loosen it up, or you can of course um, take, I've had to do this, take the edge of a punch and just work around. And eventually it breaks loose. And if you haven't been exposing this to horrible corrosive atmospheres, the chances are you're not gonna have a problem with this piece, but if you do, you do. All right, so this one's been nice enough for me to come loose. And here, actually, I can show you. See right there, see the little ball bearing? It's got a spring behind it. So I'm just going to hold it with my finger and then boom. Pull this piece out. Come on, there it goes. And uh, that's right, I'm a little off camera. I'm just dumping the ball bearing. And the spring, yeah, there's a the spring. All right, so I'll show you now. So get it back. Ah, ball bearing and spring. This is like a standard little ball bearing. If you lose this, um, I'm sure you can find one that fits. Just need to detent, so anything that'll work, and then there's a little spring. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is just clean everything. Um, clean off the old, whatever lubricant is on it. Uh, if it's from the factory, it's, it seems to be white lithium grease is what they're using. Um, so give that a wipe, and then of course on, on mine, all of my thrust bearings and everything, or thrust washers and everything, they're all horrifically corroded. It is, this is stainless too, by the way, so this corrosion you're seeing is on stainless. Um, 
which has to do with the atmosphere we use. Um, it was exposed to, it was exposed to a high chloride atmosphere. And there's basically nothing you can do short of making everything out of titanium or um, coating everything in Teflon um, to prevent that. So uh, the, what they've decided to do or we're working is basically you replace them and repair them as needed. And we've been getting a few years out of them, so I, I, I really can't complain about the quality of these guys. All right, so that's clean. Um, we can, if you look closely there, you can see, I don't know if that's paint over spray or corrosion. It's probably a bit of both. So that's what's been causing our problems. And it's, to be honest, you can see this little port here. I don't know why that's there. Um, I assume it's from their manufacturing process. Maybe there's a purpose for it. Maybe it's for lubrication. I don't know, but it's allowing corrosive vapors to go in and that's what's causing our problems. So what I've been doing is uh, just sealing that up with a little bit of silicone and it seems to be helping. And so yeah, you can feel it closely. You can see a little bit of aluminum oxide there. Um, and I'm gonna scrub that out just with a little bit of sandpaper. This is 400 grit sandpaper. We're not talking about super, super high tolerance here, so. Okay. Right. And then we're just gonna, oh, you can see as my, my paint flicks off from all of the corrosion. Um, see if this fits and moves smoothly without lubrication, because if I can get this in and it moves fairly smoothly without lubrication, yeah, which it does. And when I put the grease on there, it'll work really fine. Okay, I'm just gonna give that a little more. So on to, I guess since I'm sanding, I will discuss um, one of my gripes with these, uh, which is the fact that they used uh, really thin headed torque screws on something that um, it's relatively deep and the fact they use M3 and I can understand if you look at the, at the casting it's not a lot of space but a little M3 Torx head they just most of them even if I've been able to get a screwdriver in them maybe it's because of our usage maybe it's because they didn't put the right anti seize on but they've been getting stuck and the head just shears off and then you're left with a tiny little blind screw hole with a broken off screw stuck in it and so the only way I've been able to do that is I had to build a jig which very, very accurately held the mixer straight up and down. And then I've just come in with the drill press on the top, drilled it out, and retapped it. And that was not a fun job. Okay, so we've got this clean, uh, clean enough anyways. We've got the inside of this nice and cleaned up and shiny. Uh, and so now uh, I would suggest if you have it, use the paste white lithium grease. Uh, the spray kind of sucks, but I got, the, I got the spray, so. So I've just been putting a generous coating. You can wipe up the excess after. On the one side, a little bit on the inside. Okay, and then I've been absolutely filling this hole full of, because I mean, it's I've been having consistent problems with these getting stuck. So I've got a nice little coating of the white lithium grease on all of the surfaces. So now, I can take this piece and just, you know, push it in and yeah, so that's moving nice and smoothly now. I'll wipe up the excess after. So just the one thing to be careful with, you're going to have to put your spring and your ball bearing back in. And so you just slot your spring in, make sure the ball bearing is clean, which it is fairly clean, as clean as my hands are, which isn't that clean, but it'll do the job. All right. And then just push it in. There it goes. All right. And so now for this reassembly portion, you're gonna try to find the slot, which I've just found. Uh, you probably can't see it on film, but if you look through where this little screw hole is, you'll see where the slot is. And then uh, I'm going to go take the, uh, this little stud here. I'm actually gonna take the washer off of it. If it decides to come off. No, it doesn't wanna come off, so I'll just leave it on then. Uh, you want this to be roughly uh, flat, the washer and the stud, and then I'm just going to uh, wipe a little bit of the excess lithium grease on here. Why not prevent seizing? And then just put it back in with the screwdriver. Now, of course, if you don't have this lined up, it's not going to fit in all the way, and you don't want to tighten it all the way down so you get friction. So I'm just going to tighten it down to here, and then 
again, it doesn't take much force. So that's tight. So now, if all is well, we should be able to manipulate it back and forth, up, change speeds down, lock. Okay, so that's good. Just gonna wipe off some of the excess grease here. You wanna make sure you do all of your greasing before you start assembling it because you don't wanna get grease on this part. Um, this is just a little friction-y rubber friction ring. Now these will break. Uh, I've seen this happen on a few of them. You can buy replacement ones. I believe they want 50 bucks around there for them. It's a lot cheaper than a 750 plus dollar mixer. And those are very easy to change because you just have to open it. It just pops right off and it pops back on. Okay, so I've got these cleaned up. I'm sitting on some nice clean paper towel. And we can see um, this bearing is somewhat stuck. Um, there's actually very, very nicely machined two little um, I guess they're interference fit, I'm not sure precisely what to call them. But nice two little ridges which ho actually hold the bearings and then the center part is actually machined down just a little bit so the bearings can move nicely. So this bearing is uh, just sort of stuck on this last one, probably because of some some damage to this front piece where the chuck fits. So what I, all I've been doing to get this loose is, uh, it happens that my roll of mechanics wire fits this shaft nicely. And I've just been taking, um, just giving it a little tap we can see it just comes nice and loose up and then I can wipe off the rust um, and it fits nicely so this very very nicely machined um, and very uh, I mean German made I'm always impressed with their stuff you can actually a little bit of corrosion on this front part here um, I'm just gonna grab some scotch bright to clean that up So scotch Bright, I have these nice little scotch Bright pads, they work wonders as you probably know. Yeah, so that cleaned up pretty nicely. There we go. And then this is where the front bearing will sit when we put it in. I found it's actually easier to seat the front bearing before. Um, and if you need to replace these, these are just um, 6002Z. Zero zero uh, Supra makes them, um, and it's just a, a, an ABG bearing. It's just a really simple, um, as my favorite YouTuber would say, uh, jelly bean part. So we can just push this in. It's, as I said, it's not in very tightly, so we can just press it in with our fingers. If it's a little tighter, you can go in uh, with a nice little, uh, or with a wood block or something, and just give it a little tap here. So I'm just going to get this out of the way. My, uh... yeah. So that's good enough. And then uh, we've got the front bearing still on the shaft. No, there's no reason to remove it and set it separately. It's fine. So this just presses in. Now, the one thing to remember as you set this up is you want to get it, again, same as disassembly, get it level with... Oh, sorry, I'm going to have to uh, give this a tap to get it started. You want to get it level with the front bearing. Uh, as the front bearing moves on me, that's okay. I can set it seated after. Right, so there's level with the front bearing. Of course, the front bearing's moved a little bit, so I'm just going to. Uh, yes, I'm just going to move this forward and slot this guy in. All right, so now that's nice and slotted in. Now I can continue uh, just with, again, nice little ease from mechanics wire. Continuing to tap this through. Okay, make sure I get this up with the hole here. All right. All right, so that's seated where I want it to be. This is moving freely, freely-ish. So we got it spinning, good. Okay, and so this front bearing may have come up a little bit, so all I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna put the back of the shaft against this piece of wood and very carefully get this lined up on the edge of the bearing so I don't damage the shield. Just give it a little tap on both sides just to make sure it's seated in all the way. Okay, right. 
So, and you, if you look closely, you'll see the slot that the retaining ring sits in, the little C-clip. So what I'm actually gonna do, um, because of my application and how corrosive it is, I'm just gonna take a grease pen. And you know, I'm sure there's a better, better way of doing this, but uh, this is what I've got. I'm just gonna squeeze out some grease. And I, mean, I figure at minimum, this is gonna give me a little bit of a vapor barrier. And um, hopefully prolong the life of the bearing a little bit. At minimum, it'll help keep the moisture out. And if I had uh, the means, I would replace these with uh, fully sealed bearings. But that's not unfortunately not an option for me right now. Okay, so we've got our little thrust washer here. Sit that on. We've got the little shield, which I've cleaned up. It cleans up nicely. Push that down. Okay, and now you're going to take your C clamp, and if you have the tool, you'll do this properly. I don't have the tool, so you got to watch me struggle with it. All right, and same as before, we're just going to get two screwdrivers basically. I'm just going to set this up on top of here because it sits flatter, and just give it a press until it's sitting level, until it sits in the slot. Okay. Just check all the way around and make sure it's sitting in the slot. Okay, and we're good. So now we've got a working clutch. If you're curious how this works, it's slightly eccentric. So when you turn it, it removes the teeth, creates a gap, and then you pull it down and it changes from, I don't know if you can see it well, this top piece to this lower one. And then when you twist it back into place, it brings the teeth back together. So you can go from low speed slash high torque. Oh, that doesn't sound very good. To, all right, so here's low speed slash high torque to uh, high speed. All right. So just to finish this off, we've got our little, I don't, I kind of want to call it a clutch pack. I don't know. It's whatever you want to call it. Um, and so all this is, is we've got our little contact wheel. And I want to, you want to make sure that's clean. If you've got greasy fingers, which I most certainly do. Uh, make sure you give it a wipe and uh, clean your hands before you do your final assembly. Give it a wipe and clean your hands. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to, I'll give it a wipe before I put it back together. Okay. And we've got the spring. Make sure your spring is, is working properly. Of course, I've got corrosion on this because I've got corrosion on everything. And these little uh, triangle, I think they're torque limiters, I guess. So if it it can um, slip over this little detent, I think, and uh, disengage as opposed to burning out the motor or tearing up the uh, uh, tearing up the um, little contact ring there. All right, so I'm giving those a wipe. Um, I've wiped these, just wiped these off with a paper towel. The black you're seeing is just from the wear ring wearing out. If you want to give it like a, pull these apart, give them like a full bath in some sort of solvent cleaner. I haven't figured out, Simple Green doesn't work on it. Maybe Varsol will work on it. These look like they're HDP or nylon, so you're probably fine with Varsol. But I'm just going to put a little bit of white lithium grease on them. That's what they specify. And you'll want to do this before you put the, um, the wear ring in place because you don't want to get grease on that or the uh, contact ring. I mean. So all, the way these work, you've just got two sides. You can see there's three little studs and they sit against, there's three little bars here. And so they just sort of rough, loosely sit together and make sure, just make sure you've got them so they can intermesh. And then this is just a little, little shaft you can see. Line that up. All right, and push it. And there you go. So when you assemble this, this will make contact push down against the motor cone. So that uh, is the um, how to service this side of it. And like I said, I would, if you're working in a corrosive environment, maybe cover this with some silicone or something. So I'm gonna pause, I will bring the upper half back over and we'll go through how to reassemble that. All right, so on to reassembling the top half. So 
You can see here, this is the one that I pulled out. Um, this little, uh, I guess it's a almost a screw. It follows the, the slot anyways. Uh, it's, this is bent forward and that's bent out and the back's all corroded. Uh, so I've just pulled one from another mixer. Uh, we have about 60 of these on site. Most of them are broken. So I've got a nice little pile of parts to pull from. And um, again, so you just want to see it's 90 degree angle and this is sitting slightly bent. Uh, yeah, you can see it. And so that follows this um, spindle really, really well. So it threads through. And so this actually, this action is what moves the motor back and forth. Okay, so that's clean. I'm gonna uh, give it a nice, uh, generous coat with um, the white lithium grease. But first we need to reinstall these. Um, so there's two of these springs. I've just given them a, a sort of a rough wipe. Uh, and they fit into these two slots here. So I'm just gonna throw in some, uh, here, let me just prevent some overspray. And these are just going to fit into these slots here. Okay. Okay. And these are just held in place with um, the screws and the motor tray. So when you're reassembling it, just be careful. You don't want to um, uh, have these fall out. It's a pain in the butt. Okay, and so I'm just going to carefully, you do have enough room with this wire to sort of move it over, but you don't want it to hang off. All right, so that's sitting in, I'm just going to hold it and flip it over. So this is what I call the fun part. So uh, you've got this carrier tray, this is holding the motor in place, uh, so you do need to put this back, and you've also got the little spindle. And this spindle is indexed, it needs to be held in a certain um, direction, as you know. And of course, uh, because it's, um, of how tight this is, you end up, uh, and there's of course there's two washers sitting there. It's kind of a pain in the butt. You end up having to do some pretty creative, um, uh, we'll say finagling of the parts, and it takes a little bit of time sort of to get a feel for it. Um, so, actually, let's see, I think that, oh damn, uh, the flat washer I was referring to actually is, I've, stuck to the bottom of this thing. I guess there's a little bit of, yeah, there's a little bit of uh, the penetrating oil I used. Uh, ah. Thank you, magnetic tools. Okay, so there's the flat washer. And then I have uh, pulled over, uh, this is the spindle from it, it doesn't really matter. So the spindle and I need, there we go. So I'm just gonna make that set screw level. Okay, pull the shaft out. And I need to uh, lubricate this front part of the shaft. Well, I'm just gonna give it a wipe, just another final wipe. Lubricate this well, um, do it over here. And this just gets pushed in. And there's a little bit of overflowing. It doesn't make a difference. I can wipe that off after. So now comes the fun part. Now I need to take my little thrust washer. Okay, so now that I've actually found the part that I was looking for, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, this is a little bit frustrating. So I've got my little washer pack here. And it's going to sit against it with the flat washer in front and the wavy washer in the back uh, that is facing towards the front of the machine, uh, the mixer. So again, carefully holding the, the unit in place, the mixer in place, I'm just going to reach in and carefully sort of flip them on. Okay, cool. And let's see, uh, you won't be able to see it, but I can indeed confirm it is sitting in the right place. Okay. So those are in place. Um, might not hurt to throw a little bit of lube on them. I'm not sure if the, man, if the manual calls for it. And so I need my spindle, which I have right here. Um, and what I'm going to do is uh, make sure the set screw is moving. It is good. Okay, make sure it's fairly clean in here. Okay, it is good. 
I'm gonna lube this after I put it in place and it's simply because I don't wanna get my hands all dirty when I'm trying to, to put it in. And so, in order to do this, what you're gonna to need to do is thread this onto your carrier all the way up to the front. So that gives you some space to work so that you can sort of shove it in, get the screws in, and then you can twist this and get it sort of indexed correctly. All right, so let's see if I can show how this is done on camera. This is one of the most frustrating parts about putting this back together, particularly because you've got those washers. So I'm just gonna slot it back. Okay. All right. Keep it sitting. So if you look closely in here, you'll see there's a little, uh, by the motor cable, you'll, you'll see where it is, a little cable. It's a little um, raised piece of plastic. And so that little raised piece of plastic actually is kind of a pain in the butt because it means this fits very, very tightly right up against it, sort of acts as a stop. So it means that you have to uh, very precisely position this. Um, and, okay. So my front shaft is pushed forward a little bit, but don't let it push all the way forward because then your washers will fall off inside. And if you've got lube on them, it means they're going to stick to the inside, which means you're going to have the fun experience of trying to uh, uh, tap them out while they're stuck. Okay, so now um, in terms of indexing, so these, uh, the, the flat part on the front for the keying or for the shape of the shaft, the flat part on the front of this is, is 180 degrees from the flat part on the back side of the shaft. It makes life easy. Let's see, I can actually show you that. So we can see here, flat part, they're opposed to each other. So that means all you need to do is line up based on where your, your uh, spindle is currently facing, line up the flat part where the spindle is. All right, come on, you you can do it. She may have to oh, an angle a little bit. Come on, there it goes. Line it up so that it's facing out and then you just have to push it in and that was nice and easy. That cooperated with me. Sometimes they don't. Um, and the general, my general rule of thumb if they don't cooperate is I just I have a, a C clamp here, and so that this this C clamp actually fits well enough over. Um, I can uh, use a spacer on the front. I just use this as a spacer on the front. I close the C clamp on it, and it acts as a press. It just presses it back into place. But ideally, you shouldn't have to do that. If you've cleaned up everything correctly and you've got no um, no burrs on your edges, you'll just be able to simply just press it on with your fingers. And that's the best way to do it. I'm just going to throw a little more lube on here. Because this, if if you're paying attention to the materials of construction, you'll see this is brass, um, some kind of brass. And this is an aluminum casting. And there's no paint on the inside here. So you've got brass, you've got aluminum, you've got acid vapor. You get a nice little galvanic corrosion situation happening. And, Essentially, what, what you, the net result is, is, is these get horribly, horribly seized in place. All right. So that's back in. All right. So this is sitting. Is it sitting flat? Yes, it's sitting flat. Good. Sometimes these springs can get out of the slot. And if they get out of the slot, then you'll never get it down all the way. OK. So now comes the fun part, so in indexing this thing. So in this case, it's going to be nice and easy. Um, all you've got to do is push it all the way forward. Make sure the motor is all the way forward. You can see this gap space here. Push it all the way forward. And then, okay, rotate this and start to move the spindle. Again, you're going to have to hold it out of place. Aha. Okay. Until your set screw is facing up. Now, the one thing I'm going to do first, just because it seems like it's going to cooperate so I can do this, I'm just going to put. Uh, these screws back in so I don't have to keep holding the motor. Sometimes it's nice to have that loose so that you can um, sort of uh, wiggle it around as you're trying to get it lined up, particularly if it doesn't want to rotate freely. And it doesn't want to rotate freely, then it's really nice to be able to um, pull the motor and tilt it. And it gives you a little bit of uh, manipulation power. And because we're, of course, we're screwing these down on springs, I'm going to bring them loose first, and then I will tighten them all until the gap is even on both sides. All right. You don't want it to be too tight. If you, if you really reef down on it, then you're going to get a lot of friction when you try to operate it. But of course, if you don't have enough tension, then it's going to rock back and forth. And I don't want to know what that does to the, 
the longevity of the machine. Okay. All right. Um, so, I'm actually gonna cut because what I stupidly did, learned from my mistakes, is I forgot to lubricate this metal slide. Uh, I wanna lubricate on this on the back side because it does slide back and forth and the white lithium grease gives me a teensy bit of protection against corrosion. So I'm actually gonna cut, I'm gonna do that and then we'll come back. So if all, the only issue you're having with this is that it's not sliding well and it can twist, then you might be fine to do what I just did right there. Just throw a little lubricant on it and you might be good to go. Right, so back onto indexing. So you'll want this piece to sit flush, the washer to sit flush, and you'll want it just to make sure that it's indexed correctly. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your, your thing is all the way twisted to your um, uh, maximum speed in this case, uh, or minimum speed, minimum speed in this case. And then while applying pressure forward, you can twist. And um, you might actually need to just get a pair of pliers or something, uh, or an adjustable wrench. A small adjustable wrench works super well for this. Uh, the pliers tend to mar the uh, the metal a little bit. And so if you're using the original knob, you probably don't want to mar the metal. I'm changing it. Okay, so I'm pressed forward. I've got my set screw facing up. This is pressed in all the way. I'm just going to make sure this is pressed in all the way by grabbing it from both sides. Because as you know, there's a little thrust washer there, um, or a little wavy washer there. And you want to make sure that, try to get that pressed down, because that'll take up the slack. There's a little bit of slack when you work this, and if you don't have it pressed in, then you get slack as you move back and forth. I don't think it makes a difference to operation, but it, you know, it doesn't feel nice. All right, so that's moving freely again, fairly freely again. It's not shaking around, good. So that fixes the spindle, and I'm gonna throw a little bit of lube in here. Um, gonna, again, it's best if you, if you can get the, the, the little pen as opposed to the aerosol, because I'm gonna try not to get it on the circuit board. It's a white lifty grease, so it shouldn't make a difference, but you know, it's not. You can avoid spraying unknown solvents all over your circuit boards. It's probably a good idea. That's probably enough. Right. So now you can take your um, your little cone piece, which is I'll grab one of these that I've cleaned up. Give it a wipe. Now I'm not sure what the uh, the best practices is when it comes to machine tapers and lubrication. I found it makes no difference if I throw a little bit of lubricant in there, and you know that's going to prevent um, it from seizing up. If anything, if you've got good anti-seize compound kicking around, use your anti-seize compound on it. Um, a light machinist oil. I know on mills they'll use a light, mach a light machine oil to do this. I've got white lithium grease kicking around, and that's the way I'm doing it. All right, press it in again. I want to make sure there's as little oil on this as possible. Uh, wipe it off, clean your hands, use a fresh paper towel. Okay. All right, final other notes um, while you're repairing this. These little wire, this is a little Hall Effect sensor that connects to that magnet piece that I showed you earlier. Um, these can get dislodged fairly easily, and if they get dislodged, you won't get your RPM readout. Uh, this board, if you've had to tilt it forward to get the spindle off, make sure you clip that back down. Um, if you notice any of this wiring is really corroded or come loose, you can see the little screw terminals here. Fairly easy to fix. The wiring, is in, the wiring layout is in the diagram. You've also got two fuses at the back. Um, if it doesn't turn on, it might be one of these two fuses. So they're really simple. Um, it's in the spec sheet what fuses these are. Uh, and of course, if you do find you need to undo the motor, you can undo the motors from this little bar here and get a wiring diagram inside. And don't forget your ground lead that connects to the front side of your casing. There's a little spade terminal right there. And as I was saying with the shielding, don't lose your shielding. And I'm just gonna wipe my uh, greasy fingerprints off of it. All right, and that just sits in underneath the board. This board's just held in place with the um, uh, clamping action of the case. Now, I, I don't know if I like that design, but it seems to be working. And again, these have held up, so I'm not gonna complain. 
Uh, the other thing is you've got this little strain relief. Make sure it's fitting in the slot well. Um, if it's not fitting in the slot well, that can make it a bit difficult to get it closed. All right, so this is all back together. Uh, another thing that, another mistake I've made uh, more times than I care to admit, just because, you know, if you're sitting there and working fast, you tend to forget these little things, is that in all likelihood, you have taken off that plastic piece uh, with a magnet that lets you, there it is, I'm hiding behind it, that lets you, uh, gives you your speed debug, it goes to a hall effect sensor. So I'm just going to give that a wipe. And remember to press it back on, and it just, you know, goes on pretty easily. There we go. And make sure that your um, triangle um, clutch thingies are not facing directly against each other. I don't know how that happened, but there we go. Good. That spring of a thingy, good. Just gonna give that a wipe. Good. So the way I like to do the final assembly is I push the spade terminal on. Good, okay. Bring this vertical. And just gently work it in. Sometimes the electrical wiring can kind of get in the way. Come on, there it goes. All right. And you're going to cooperate with me. Okay. I don't know what's going on there. Something's going on there. Is that not pressed all the way in? No, no that's okay. It, if you've worked on these, and once you work on these, you'll get an idea. It's very tight, very tight tolerance. You can actually see, you can barely see light through there. They're not touching, but you can barely see light through. All right. What's going on? You know what I'm going to do? It might just be, this just might be a little bit stiff. Let's just throw a little bit of lube on there. Okay. Now the other option is um, there may actually, I'm not, 100% sure about let me let me check actually let's check why not there's two no they're the same I've had some of these black ones and I wasn't sure if they were different sizes they're the same they just made them out of a different plastic maybe it's even the same plastic and they figured out they didn't need the UV filler UV resistance filler on it just saved themselves a little bit of money all right There it goes. Okay, ah, there it is. We're in, good. One more note before reassembly. There's a little fiberglass uh, insulation piece and it fits in this teensy little slot right here. And it can fall out while you're working on it as has happened with me. So what you're gonna have to do is it, there's slots of two different depths, it's two different depths. So it'll be easy for you to see where it fits. But you're gonna have to sort of finagle it under the wires and then it presses in and then, um, Push it back up. And All right, on to final assembly. So, as I was saying, I've been replacing these original uh, torque screws with um, these little stainless ones. I'm just putting a little bit of anti seize on them. And nice little 2.5 millimeter driver as opposed to the irritating torques. And so, yeah, just a matter of putting these guys in. A little bit of anti-seize. I've been putting washers on them. Um, I'm not sure if it's strictly necessary. The ones I've been pulling apart don't seem to have washers, but it's entirely possible the washers have corroded and they're just um, metal dust by the time I've actually had the chance to get to them and open it up. All right. And um, and the original design, the front washers had little, they were little tooth washers. The front had little tooth washers. I. I don't really see the need for it. Um, I suppose it might help with anti-vibration, but if you want to buy little toothed washers from McMaster Car or wherever you get your stuff from, uh, go ahead. Oh, this is going to be irritating. Uh, so I'm going to have to use a longer, uh, longer screw here. 
I think, uh, because the the casting is broken on this the front of this. Okay, so I'm gonna go off camera later, and I'll put a longer screw in there. These are the original ones were 10 millimeters. Uh, this one the screw stripped off. I drilled it out, and as I was drilling it out, the casting cracked because I mean, it's it's seen some abuse. And so to, the final step is just to put the chuck back on. So what I've been working on, uh, let me grab it, yes, um, as sort of a, a means of preventing some of the um, corrosion we've been seeing. I've just been putting on just rust -Oleum enamel and then I've been uh, baking it and putting on rust -Oleum enamel and then baking the parts. I, I, if you ha don't know how to take apart a chuck, these are similar to the, the Jacobs chucks. You just need an arbor press, and then you can go in with an arbor press and um, pull it apart, which is actually what these are. So these are just, let me get this out of the way. These are just the parts from the inside of the chuck here. Three teeth and the split washer, and then I just painted these separately. And these can be reassembled at will. Most people, this is going to make, these are actually stainless. They are stainless. Um, the center piece seems to be a different alloy than the outer piece. It doesn't make much of a difference. Um, but I'm, we're getting corrosion. Mind you, of course, again, highly corrosive atmosphere where we're working. So I'm just giving this a, a scrape because I have a little bit of overspray. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to take some scotch bright. Give this a wipe with Scotch Brite. Actually, before I put this on, this is a good place to test it and make sure it's working. Um, okay. All right, so it's moving. I'm getting an RPM reading. Um, I'll put an. I'm gonna put a knob on it actually here. I just bought these phenolic, they're phenolic and brass. They were like five bucks each for my master car and they seem to be doing a pretty good job. They go on with a set screw, which I think is a bit of an improvement over the original design, uh, which was the press on. I, I mean, the press on, it looks nice and it, it sort of can, um, uh, take up some of the slack, so to speak, if the piece comes loose inside, but the big downside to it is that it, um, that little metal carrier doesn't have enough, a lot of surface area, so it's not too hard for, oh, that looks, that looks great. Of course, I lose my little, my little tube to direct the flow. What a, hey. if you've watched this video so far, I think you got a, got a taste of the way that I roll, so. All right. So I'm just going to tighten this down with my incorrectly sized screwdriver. Actually, this little driver set I bought from uh, Canadian Tire, and if you're in the US, you can get it from Harbor Freight. I'm not sure where you guys get your cheapy cheap tools in Europe. But um, sometimes, you know, your, your $5 screwdriver set has a place. This kind of work is one of them, especially in a building where uh, your stainless steel will corrode. Okay, this guy is, aha, let's see. Ah, good enough. It's on, and we can, sorry, flip it over. Let's see, as I rotate, the motor moves back and forth. Turn it on. So 2,500 RPM. 800 RPM, and then I can, there, 98 RPM to 500 RPM. I don't like the sound that's making, um, but as I'm sure you can tell, these guys are being run till they're totally gone, so I don't have much of an option there. All right, so, Chuck, same deal as before. I'm just putting a little bit of, um, a little bit of white lithium grease on it, just 
uh, mainly for corrosion prevention, but you know anything at all to help prevent it seizing. And you can see, you just want to line up um, your little pin with the, uh, the set screw there. Then all you have to do is just press down. Aha, that went on nicely. And then it's the same 2.5 millimeter driver or 2.5 sized uh, driver that I've been using for the rest of it. Other reason to choose that size makes it easy to take apart. And there we go. We can remove this, uh, this uh, broken mark on it. And we're done. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this hasn't been too horrible. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comments. I will attempt to address them. I'm not going to suggest subscribing to me. I don't put out many videos like this. But hell, if you want to, whatever. Have a good one, guys.